Hi, I'm John Olson. Welcome to Next Stop from a destination where agriculinary tourism is thriving. Welcome to Central Oregon, where farm to table is much more than a phrase, it's a way of life, and the locals truly support each other. This episode culminates with a fabulous feast at local well-known chef Betty's home, but before that, we're going to take you to the sources of some of the food she'll be preparing. We'll visit an organic farm, a ranch, we'll talk gelato, we'll talk wine, spirits, and much more on this episode of Next Stop from Central Oregon. The fun starts now. We're at DD Ranch and I'm happy to introduce Chef Betty and Jeff. Good to meet you guys. Good to meet you. I've been looking forward to meeting you because we're going to have a fabulous feast at your house and this is one of our sources. Yes, it is. Tell us about your relationship. Well, I've been coming to DD Ranch for about six years now. It was one of the very first stops on my culinary tour because I want to teach people about where their food comes from. So I see so many different types of animals here. Mm -hmm. Run through the gamut. Well, uh, well, right now we're raising uh, Polt Hereford, Red Angus, and we've got about 40 sheep in our flock, about 20 lamb and 15 ewes. And so that's our primary source of revenue. The rest of these animals that you see around here in the petting zoo and are mostly just ornaments. Chef Betty, you talk about children and educating them. What, what sort of things do you educate them on a ranch? All these animals have been raised with, with love and care, and they've only had one bad day. One bad and if day. They, and if they take that away, I think that they will all make better food choices for the rest of their lives. And if we can make an impact early on, then my job is done. It's a great lesson. Now you have a special relationship with the animals. You say they communicate with you. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. <laughs> well, I, I'd say of all of them, the pigs are the most communicative. They, uh, they let me know first thing in the morning and every evening that they're happy to see me. That's for sure. Those little babies are adorable over there. Yeah. How well, old are they? Uh, those guys are about a month old, uh, the little piglets. And that's probably as cute as they'll ever get. I think uh, <laughs> they'll start- All babies are cute, right? <laughs> once they turn into teenagers, they are very difficult to contain. That's for sure. So how does Dee Dee Ranch fit into our dinner? Um, we are actually going to get some lamb from them. We are going to make a lamb ragu. Certainly our goal is to make sure that when the animals are going in for process and they're going at the peak of their health, they're not limping in. And, and so um, part of that is getting out amongst them and, and we interact with them quite often, uh, whether we're moving them or feeding them. Up next, we visit local favorite Primal Cuts, and we learn about distilling spirits in downtown Bend. <laughs> Chef Betty, I know you're very familiar with Primal Cuts Meat Market, a place you come a lot, so I'm gonna let you take over the hosting duties of this segment, but tell us how it fits into tomorrow's dinner. Well, uh, Butcher Brian, the owner of Primal Cuts, uh, procures all of his meat from the local farms and ranches in the area. So he not only um, purchases the animals, but he then breaks them down, and then he makes all of his sausages, his different charcuterie, and so forth. So we're going to go in and we're going to get the charcuterie for our appetizers tomorrow. Sounds so, delicious. Yep, absolutely. I'll follow you. Let's go. Hi, Brian. How are you? I'm good. So good. I want to introduce you to John. This is Hi, my Doc. friend Butcher Brian, hey, Brian. also Hi, known nice as Brian Tremaine, the owner of Primal Cuts Meat Market. Hey, we yeah. are going to get okay. some charcuterie and some of Brian's pickles and mustards and also some cheese for our dinner tomorrow night. Well, we have a few uh, things over here. Uh, our roulettes that we make that you're going to be getting and uh, pancetta, a couple things like that. So yeah. Work your magic. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Cotadilla cheese. cheese, so that's procured, um, that's made locally in Prineville. Uh, jalapeno, um, uh, jalapeno beer mustard. Beer mustard. Yeah. So we're gonna go jump into the meat. What? Uh, okay. What so like? what do you what do you have? 
Uh, calabrese. Okay. It's, a, uh, it's pepperoni style. It's uh, going to be a little bit spicy, a little bit of uh, acid to it. We've got the uh, prosciutto, awesome prosciutto. We'll have some of all of that. Brian makes all of his sausages here. Um, he makes a, a great hot dog. That's my husband loves brats, so he makes all different types of brats. Then he has the beer section. It's called Growler Fills, and so he has all these different beers on taps. He has um, beer, local beer, as well as kombucha. love the old paper too. This reminds me when I was a kid. We used to go to the meat market. My mm -hmm. grandparents would take me in. We'd get all the fresh meat. Yeah. Yeah, from the beginning, this has been like, I wanted it to be the old-fashioned style meat market that you get that service. You get like half the people, if you stay here for over an hour, you'll hear us. Like 90% of the people walking in, we know their name. It's awesome. Oh, it's, yeah, definitely. It's great. That's uh, my grandfather was in a grocery store he was the meat guy i remember going in watching him cut meat when i was a kid and different things like that and so then it's kind of skipped generations until me and so kind of just brought it back we're at oregon spirit distillers for a little mixology 101. Distilling is a great uh, opportunity for us to take local uh, grown agriculture and turn it into a great commodity. And years ago we started just by experimenting uh, with wheat and rye and malted barley and corn and making whiskey out of it. And it turned into a career. Six years ago we started this fantastic business and uh, it allows us to accent what um, what is naturally around us. That's a family business too. You, you've even named some of the liquors after your brothers, uncles. My brother uh, gave us the early seed money. His name is uh, C.W. Irwin uh, to get uh, the uh, founded. C.W. Irwin it's is appropriate. it is uh, <laughs> bourbon. And then uh, my grandfather, so Otis Weber, wheat whiskey is our second whiskey that we released. So you guys also make vodka and gin and. Absinthe? Yes, absolutely. We make two different gins. We make a dry gin called Scribbles, and Merry Legs is an a ancient style of gin. Uh, gin. It's a Geneva style gin. So in distilling, you take uh, grain, and uh, we grind it into a flour. And in the uh, case of bourbon, it's mostly corn. It's got some wheat and rye and barley in it as well. As we heat it, alcohol uh, rises up through this column. It's a vapor. Um, it crosses over and then using cool water we chill it again and then we're going to barrel it and we're going to let it sit for four years. Let's check it out. I love yeah. barrel rooms. It smells good in here. It smells fantastic. So this is our barrel room. This is uh, 350 barrels uh, that we've produced over the last four years. Um, here the alcohol will live for four years. And during that time, um, uh, the alcohol is going to extract flavor from the wood. I noticed the happy birthday <laughs> yeah. slide. What's that all about? Uh, I gave that to my daughter, and when she turns 21 in 10 years, uh, she will be <laughs> allowed. Uh, that is her very own barrel of rye whiskey. So Chef Betty has told me that she wants you to make some crazy cocktail with gin or vodka for the dinner. Do you have something in mind? I think we're going to do something with the uh, Mary Legs Geneva gin. So now we make the magic. This is a fantastic cocktail. It's called the Mary Berry. And we've got uh, an Oregon grown strawberry and fresh basil. And uh, we're going to muddle it. We're going to add our Mary Legs Geneva, which is an uh, ancient style gin. We're going to give it a quick shake. As only a pro can do. It's a fantastic fall cocktail. Perfect. Cheers. Delicious. So what's up with the Pringles poster on the wall over there? Thank you for asking. Uh, so my father worked for Procter & Gamble in the late 60s and early 70s when I was born. So we have encased in resin uh, the first Pringle off the, the line. That is awesome. I'm so <laughs> glad I asked. <laughs> Richard Irwin in 1967. It's awesome. Awesome drinks, great story. Great to meet you. I'm so glad Thanks you came, John. Thank you.
Coming up, we'll talk turkey at Rain Shadow Organics. Then we're off to stomp grapes at Marigus Winery. Chef Betty joins us once again, and today we're at Rain Shadow Organics, located between Sisters and Redmond, Oregon. It's a busy time here. It's the harvest. Sarah Lee, I know this is a very busy time of year for you guys, so thank you for having us today. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks What's going on here? What's happening? Well, we're harvesting. It's September, and we've got a full array of vegetables, and it's taking several days to get through all of our orders and getting everything out of the field. I notice there's no big fancy machinery. You guys are like going old school. You're picking by hand. This is yeah. just like salt of the earth. Yeah, everything is by hand. Everything is sorted by hand, washed by hand, packed, and delivered all by hand. How many different things are you growing here? I see so many different aisles, and everything has a meaning, Chef Betty tells me. So we grow about 48 different kinds of vegetables and about 250 varieties of those vegetables. Now, Chef Betty, you're all about educating children. When you bring kids here, what do you teach them? Well, we teach them about um, really what Sara Lee does and to show them um, how um, vegetables are grown and raised and the fact that she has different types of animals here on the farm and what the animal's purpose is. And um, some children, some adults have never seen a live turkey. I saw some big turkeys down there. Yeah. Let's go check them out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the feathers. Yeah. Are they showing off? Uh, definitely. Those are the males. Anybody who's got their feathers out is a male. They spend most of their time gobbling and showing off. And I don't know when they get their eating done. It's like, how do you even grow? All you do is strut. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> so I noticed you have greenhouses around the property. Mm -hmm. And other things are growing outside. What's, what's the purpose? So things that are sensitive to frost, basil, all of our squash, winter squash, summer squash, tomatillos, ground cherries, eggplants, tomatoes. And you're going to be feeding us on Wednesday night. Yeah. What are we going to have from here? Um, we're going to have um, some of her greens and her tomatoes. We're going to take some of her wheat that she's milled into flour. So Chef Betty, we're going to work with some of this lettuce on Wednesday night? You bet. What are we going to do with it? So we're going to make it into a really nice salad with a uh, house-made vinaigrette. So you mentioned tomatoes. Oh yeah. Happen to be my favorite. Uh -huh. Well, we'll head that way. Heaven. This is heaven. <laughs> yep. Cherry tomatoes. My favorite. Mm, very cool. Mm, they're super sweet. It's like candy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Sarah Lee, what's new with Rain Shadow Organic? What's coming up? Well, we're finishing one season and starting the next. And uh, this winter, we're really excited about building a commercial kitchen and farm stand on the property so that we can actually be open to the public and have people come and see where their food comes from and actually get their food here on the farm. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. We're at Marigus Winery and our timing is great. It's the annual Grape Stomp. Today's event is a blast. Tell us about your annual grape stomp. You know, uh, we started this six years ago. Um, it's uh, kind of neat because my father and my uncle both did this when they were kids for commercial wine production. And you got live music going on. All we the do. locals come out. It's the, stomp the stomping is old school stomping. They're actually in the bucket stomping the grapes. <laughs> the competition was stiff. Yeah, it was. But let's taste your wine. You got it. I love wines. So I'm going to start with, uh, let's start with this bottle right here, which is a Malbec. Uh, we barrel age all of our wine. So that one, in fact, is sourced from a 14-acre vineyard just south of us. It's delicious. I love it. If you like really, really big reds, this is as big as you can make a Zin. Uh, we allowed a lot of raisining on the vine, which contributes to the flavor, making it jammy. And it's also going to be very intense with flavor, four and a half years in the barrel. 
really nice. Thank you. They're really good. Thank I'm you. surprised to find wineries in Central Oregon. I mean, you think of the Willamette Valley in Oregon, that it's, it's yes. surprising. And I think the only reason why it wasn't done is because there was a conception here that you couldn't grow grapes here. But it's uncannily like our family vineyard in Crete, which still exists, and my, my cousin runs it. Uh, and um, if you look at that picture up there, that's my Uncle John. And it looks just like Central Oregon. It's sandy loam soil, volcanic, just like it is here. And lo and behold, after eight years of investigating and actually having an outdoor vineyard laboratory, so to speak, you can grow really good grapes here. And the grapes that thrive at this vineyard, amazingly enough, not being able to grow grapes, Zinfandel and Cabernet Franc are amazing on the same. What's it like to live in Central Oregon? Oh, it's amazing. I Great almost place said to raise it rocks, kids, right? Because there's Smith Rock right behind us. <laughs> yeah, your location is awesome. Yeah, thank one you. One of the seven wonders of Oregon. This is one of the. We'll call this the eighth wonder. Of okay, Oregon. I'll take it. Yeah. Coming up on Next Stop, see how gelato is made, and we'll bring everything together at an amazing feast with Chef Betty. Every great dinner ends with a scrumptious dessert. On tonight's menu, Bonta Gelato. What are we doing here, Julie? Um, we are going to dump uh, this base into the batch freezer. And this is a vanilla bourbon pecan. All right, so this is just gonna go straight in the machine. Difference between gelato and ice cream. Uh, main difference is gelato is made mostly with milk. Um, I can't actually legally call it ice cream because it doesn't meet the minimum butterfat requirement to call it ice cream. So it has about 6% butterfat. But people butter love your gelato. That's it why is. we're here. Yeah, we just opened a retail shop this spring and so that we originally started doing wholesale, uh, supplying to grocery chains, restaurants in the area, and then this last year we just opened our retail shop. So that has really kind of spurred the other parts of our business as well. First, I'm just going to get the product out of the machine and then I'll show you the folding process, but we'll get the majority of it out. So what we're going to do now, fold in pecans, kind of uniform distribution. That looks yummy. It is. You want to try it? I do. Yeah, go for it. So this is dessert. This is dessert. Dessert is served. Oh my. The guests are in for a treat. It's the main event, a feast at Chef Betty's home, bringing together all the local ingredients we featured this week. From farm to Chef Betty's table, we go. Thank you so much for having us in your home tonight. My pleasure. It's been such fun working with you this week, but we haven't talked about the well-traveled fork. Okay, let's. Tell us about it. Well, um, I am originally from Southern California, where I was a caterer for several decades. And in the last few years I was there, I taught an after-school cooking class to elementary school children. And these children thought that lettuce came in a bag, <laughs> that chickens had nuggets and that pasta came in a box. And I really wanted people to understand the source of their food, that vegetables grow in the ground, that somebody raises um, with care a pig and a steer to turn into our, our dinner. And from that came our cooking classes because people didn't know what to do with grass-fed meat. And I think what I'm most proud of now is that we run six different culinary camps for children during, during the summer. That's wonderful. Yep, so it's, it's all about teaching people about local food and the source of their food and then what to do with it. So you and Jeff built this house? Yes. Is this like your dream kitchen? It, I, I put in just about everything I wanted, so yeah. Ladies, <laughs> eat your heart out. No, this is beautiful. Thank you. But one thing that kind of pops out to me is the 1920 oven over there. 
Yeah, so um, that is 1920 Wedgwood. It was my sister-in-law's. Well, everything smells amazing. Run through the dinner again real quick. So um, we are going to start with a charcuterie plate. Um, so we purchased all of that from uh, Butcher Brian yesterday at Primal Cuts. Um, and then we're going to have a lamb bolognese um, and with pasta. And so we got the ground lamb from Dee Dee Ranch. Um, we're also going to have a beautiful salad where I got all the greens and the tomatoes um, from Sara Lee at Rain Shadow Organics. And then our dessert is going to be some wonderful, wonderful um, bonta gelato. I helped so, a little bit with that, yeah. just oh. so you know. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, um, our spirits is going to be a wonderful cocktail um, from Oregon Spirit Distillers. And our wine tonight is from our friends um, Doug and Gina Marigas at um, Marigas Wineries. Thanks so much for joining us on Next Stop from Central Oregon, where agriculinary tourism is alive and well. I don't think I've ever been to a destination anywhere in the world where the local community supports each other so much. It's pretty awesome. Thanks also to this show's sponsor, the Central Oregon Visitors Association and Alaska Airlines. Next Stop, where will we take you next? Make good memories, everybody. Go home and tell your kids that switch. I made turkeys talk. <laughs> I know. Welcome to another edition of Awkward Moments in the Kitchen with Julie. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, I it's all resist. good. It's all good. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Lots of awkward moments in my world. <laughs>